Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with algebraic expressions. We're given that x over x squared plus 5x plus 1 is equal to 1 over 8. And we're supposed to evaluate x squared divided by x to the 4th plus 25x squared plus 1. I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to cross multiply. Let's go ahead and multiply x squared plus 5x plus 1 by 1. And then multiply 8 by x. From here, we do get a quadratic equation, which is very easy to solve. Let's go ahead and subtract 8x. And you should be familiar with this equation. I think it came up in a recent video. Anyways, if you solve it using quadratic formula, you're going to get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 5, 9 minus 4, divided by 2. So there are two x values for which this is going to work, but do you think uh, they're going to give us the same answer, right? Because we have a fixed expression, we're going to replace x with something. Well, you can test it out, they should give you the same answer. Let's go ahead and use the one with the plus sign. So 3 plus root 5 divided by 2. Let's replace x with that in the second expression. Our second expression is x squared over x to the 4th plus 25x squared plus 1. Now we're going to replace x with that. So it might make sense if you evaluate x squared separately and also x to the 4th and then just plug it in instead of writing it every single time. So let's go ahead and square this expression first. To get to the fourth power, obviously, I'm going to square twice. But let's square it first once. Uh, 3 squared plus square root of 5 squared plus 2ab is going to give us 6 root 5 divided by 4. This is 14. So it's 14 plus 6 root 5 divided by 4. And when you simplify this, divide everything by 2, you're going to get 7 plus 3 root 5 over 2. That's going to be the value of x squared. And we also need x to the fourth power. Let's go ahead and evaluate that as well by squaring this expression. So x to the fourth power is actually going to be 7 squared plus 3 root 5 squared, which is 9 times 5. And that's going to be 45. Plus from 2ab, we're going to get 21 times 2, which is 42 root 5 all over 4. Again, we can simplify this. 49 plus 45 is going to be 94. If you divide everything by 2, because that's the common factor, you're going to get 47 plus 21 root 5 over 2. Okay, both fractions have the same denominator, which is good. Probably combining them will be easier. Now we're supposed to evaluate this expression right here. So let's go ahead and replace x squared with 7 plus 3 root 5 over 2. And then we're going to divide it by x to the fourth power, which is 47, plus 21 root 5, divided by 2, plus 25x squared. So if you go ahead and uh, put the 25 here, it, later on we're just going to need to distribute it. But let's go ahead and write it this way for now. Plus 1. Okay. And you can write this as 2 over 2, so that we have a common denominator. Now notice that because the top and the bottom have the same denominator, we can totally forget about the denominators and just add the numerators. That gives us the following, 7 plus 3 root 5 all over. Now at the bottom, you're going to get 47 plus 21 root 5. Plus, if you distribute the 25 over this, 25 times 7 is going to give you 175 plus 75 root 5 plus 2. So what we're supposed to do here is basically simplify the denominator and then see if we can write this in the simplest form. Okay, great. So let's see what we have. 47 plus 175. How do you add those two numbers? One way to do it is basically you could add 175 and 45, which is going to give you 220, and then just add 2, which is going to give you 222. And then by adding 2 to it, you're going to get 224. Make sense? Again, 175 plus 47. You could also do the following. You could just add 170 and 40, which is 210, plus 12 is going to give you 220, 2, plus 2, 224. And then 21 plus 75 is almost 100, right? It's 96, plus 96, root 5. Awesome. Here's the most important part. 
Do you think this can be simplified? It wouldn't it be awesome like if you could really simplify it? One way to see it is you could multiply by the conjugate. Let me just tell you what you could have done, which probably you wouldn't do, but you can multiply by this, top and bottom, and then that should simplify, right? Yeah, it is, but that's going to be ugly. It's going to be very painful, a little bit painful, because you're going to have to square 224. There's actually a better way, because if you think about it, 3 to 96 is 1 to 32 ratio. So what happens if you multiply 7 by 32? Let's check it out. 32 times 7 is going to be 224. Exactly. So this is what it means. You can go ahead and factor out a 32 and you're going to get inside the parentheses 7 plus 3 root 5. And isn't that awesome? Obviously, this problem has been designed that way. Therefore, it's going to come up with a nice answer. But if you cancel these expressions out, you can end up with 1 over 32 as the answer. It's that simple. Solving the equation and substitution took a little while, but as you see, the answer is pretty nice. Which means that, hopefully, there is a second method that's a lot easier. So that's what we're going to look at now. So, second method. Again, let me rewrite the problem. We are given x divided by x squared plus 5x plus 1 equals 1 over 8. And I think we've done a similar problem before. Let me see if I can find it, or if you can find it, please link it down below. Thank you. 25x squared plus 1. Okay, so this is the expression we're supposed to evaluate. Now, when you see an expression like this, let's say this came up on a math contest, right? Obviously, you wouldn't solve for x because that would be kind of not very elegant. So let's go ahead and uh, do something more elegant. And that is flipping both sides. Now, why would you flip? What's the motivation, right? Because there's a single term in the numerator. If you flip both sides, you're going to be able to separate or split it up. So this is going to become 8. Now, what is that equal to? Split, like ev divide everything by x. You're going to get x plus 5 plus 1 over x equals 8. And what's even better is you can subtract 5 and get x plus 1 over x. Does that look familiar? Yes. If you make a common denominator, you're going to get the exact same equation that we got with the first method, right? It was this one. Yes, exactly. Same thing, because it's the same x value we're talking about, right? By the way, we didn't test the, the one with the minus sign, but if you do, you're going to get the same thing. Anyways, so if you go ahead and do the same thing with the second expression, but how do you flip something that is not equal to anything? Question mark. Okay, let's go ahead and set it equal to k since we're expecting to get a constant answer. So x squared over x to the fourth plus 25 x squared plus one is equal to k. I'm gonna go ahead and flip both sides and you could also set it equal to one over k by the way, but since we're trying to find k, it's better to set it equal to k. So now this is gonna be one over k. If you can solve for one over k, we can solve for k, right? Now let's go ahead and split it up again. x squared plus 25 plus one over x squared equals one over k. And now this is x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 25, which is equal to 1 over k. Awesome. If you really want to do this, you can write k as 1 over, 1 over x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 25. There you go. That's the answer. But what is x squared plus 1 over x squared? Do I know it? No, but I can find it easily. Look, if you just square both sides here, you get x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2 equals 9, and then subtract 2 from both sides, and this becomes 7. Great. So now this we can replace this with 7. 7 plus 25 is 32, and this gives us 1 over 32 as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care, and bye-bye.